Psalm 119, verse number 113. And if your Bible has Psalms, and 119 has the little weird signs and letters and words, that is the Hebrew alphabet. And so 119, 113, that's Sonic. Sonic. Sonic or Sonic? And I'm not going to get it completely right, and I'm not going to go to hell, you know, for mispronouncing. So, I hate. Oh, that's a thing. Oh, man. Whoa. Woohoo. Gotta take a blue pill after that one. I hate. That's not what the world teaches today. Erase the hate. And yet there's a bunch of people, you know, uh, we hate you because you're not for us and you don't stand for us. And 20, 50, 30 years ago, you did something to my, you know, it's called hip hypocrisy. I hate. And hate is a biblical word. Now there's a good hate and there's a bad hate. I don't hate any brethren. There's some I can't stand, there's some I can't get along with, there's some, you know, we just don't get together. But I pray for them, I don't hate them. I don't think there's anybody who's unsaved. I hate enough that I wouldn't want them to go to hell. And the Bible said, we read earlier, we're to hate sin. I don't hate Catholics, though I've been in charge. I hate the Catholic Church. There's a big difference. I hate vain thoughts, empty thoughts, have no value. Sin. When you think of something, it, it, it's not going to do you nothing. Daydreaming. Night dreaming. Has no value. And the writer of the psalm, the psalmist says, I hate them vain thoughts. Nothing. It has no purpose to God and for the Christian, it's going to be wood, hay, or stuff. Daydream. But, contra, thy law do I love. There's that law again. Again, the psalms were in the Old Testament. We're talking about the, the, the law of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And we look at the law so stiff, we look at the law so harsh, this guy having no New Testament and no gospel says, I love it. Why? Because it brings him a relationship with God and it nails down for the Jew. God said, this is what I like, this is what I hate. This is what I want you to do, and this is what I don't want you to do. And Paul calls it our schoolmaster. The law shows us today we're sinners. We ought to like that because you know what? Because knowing that we sin against God, we can come to Calvary and get saved. Thou, God, art my hiding place. Place to get away from it all. <clears throat> Trouble, going hiding. And my shield. Now, Paul speaks about the Christian armor and the shield is the shield of faith. So scripture with scripture, he's saying, you know what? My shield, shield of faith. He says, God, you're my shield. You're my faith. And there are too many people that put faith in a politician. There's people that put faith in my money. There's a faith in my career. There's a faith in my sports team. There's a faith in me, the great eye. That's all going to fail. That's all going to come short. Your faith ought to be the faith of God and God alone through Jesus Christ. He says it's God. Paul says it's it's faith. They're, they're, they're one together. I hope in thy word. And he don't have the Gospels and he don't have the New Testament like we have today. He says, what I do have, and I don't know how much he has, but I know he has the law. And some of the historical books and probably some of the prophets. He says, I love it. Paul, uh, Job says, I, I, I love the word more than my necessary food. Do you love the word that much? Or do you go days without devouring the word? Are you more 
faithful to your cup of coffee than the Word of God? Are you more faithful to going to work than the Word of God? What if God were to give us a check at the end of the year for how much we read the scriptures? What could you buy? When the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. We're not only to read the, hey, look, I finished, I got through all year, yay, what'd you learn? I didn't learn nothing. We're supposed to study. Depart from me, ye evildoers. And again, in 2 Corinthians, it, it tells us we're not to have part with unbelievers. There is a biblical doctrine of salvation. And if that man, if that woman is doing evil, and if it's your spouse, if it's your parents, it is your children, it is a pastor, it is a Christian, it is a boss, it is a co-worker, Bye. Get, get away from me. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What if his, what if his son came up to him? Oh, God, I'm not going to serve the Lord. Get out. My house, we're going to do it. What if his wife came? And I'm just making speculation. But what if his wife came and said, honey, no. Then I'm going to serve the Lord and you can be in trouble. And I know many Christians, and I speak from experience. I speak since I've been saved since 1987. April 25th. That's the, I stopped saying the 21st and 27th. That's the 25th. And I've seen Christians do not separate from evildoers. They allow them, and a lot of them are family and friends, and they blow their whole life. And I'm seeing churches allowing evildoers to come in and do evil deeds in the name of Jesus, and their churches are failing. For I will keep the commandments of my God. Look how often the writer says, I'm going to the law, I'm going to the commandments, I'm going to the word, I'm going to the precepts, I'm going to the judgment, I'm going to the statute, I'm going to the word, I'm going to the word. It's the word, it's the word, it's the word. It's the word. Oh, you talk too much about the Bible. You talk too much about, about Jesus. You talk too much about God. The psalmist in, in Psalms 119 did not have enough to say. Evidently, you don't. Uphold me according to thy word. So if you want to be upholded, you want to be lifted up, you want to be exalted by God. You want to know how to do it? Study the Word of God and it says, it show you how to do it. Look at all according to the Word of God we've seen, just Psalm 119. Oh, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I, it's in the Word of God. Have you read the Bible? No, I read a great book about this professor about the Bible. I read this doctor wrote a book about prayer. I wrote crapola. Don't say crap. Okay, I won't say crap. Apologize for saying crap. Get in the Word. The Word is the Word of itself. I don't understand some words in the King James Bible. Keep reading the King James Bible. In most cases, I think 95% will explain eventually the word that you don't understand here. Somewhere else in the Bible, it will explain to you what that word means. And yet, there are words in the King James Bible that I look it up in the dictionary, I look it up under commentaries, I look it under this thing, I look it under that thing, and like, yeah, that didn't help. There's a few words like that, that didn't help. I'm going to throw the whole Bible out for what, five, six words maybe? I don't even think it's that much. That I may live. You want to live? I want to live. I run down the store and get me a how-to book. I'm going to run down the store and get me, you know, uh, 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 essential oils, vitamins, and 
plants and greens and what about the Bible? I ain't got time for the Bible. Then you're not going to live. Does not John chapter 1 verse 1 say that the, the word is Jesus? John chapter 1. What did Jesus say in chapter, I mean, in John 14, 6? I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the, there you go. The word is Jesus, uh, 1 John 5. The Father, the word. The word here gives life. Jesus says, I'm the word, and I'm life. And the Bible says, Jesus Christ is eternal life. You want that word? You want to live? You want to be uplifted? You want to be upheld? You want your life? Come to Jesus. Come to the Word. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And me and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Well, John, Titus 2.13 says the blessed hope is Jesus Christ. Where does the Bible say about not being ashamed? For the Christian. Study to show thyself approved unto God and work with him that need to be shamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. You don't want to be ashamed. You don't want to, you know, give up on the blessed hope of Jesus. Stay in the word. Study the word. Memorize scripture. I'm memorizing scripture right now. I, I'm working on a thing I got in my life right now. Troubles and I've been given memorization. Memorize the scripture. Thy word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against it. You don't want to be ashamed of, of my hope, Jesus Christ. And many and too many are ashamed. You know why they, you know why they stay ashamed and they don't do what the Bible tells them to do? Because they don't read the Bible, they don't read the consequences. And they think, oh, okay, if I don't look, if I don't read it, God's not gonna hold me to. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, listen, I'm a street preacher. I'm telling you in Daytona Beach, and, and, and we've been down here and six years at the farmers market, and we have seen grown old people walking with hey, we hear it. Now, if I don't hear it, I'm not gonna be no, I'm not gonna hear him. If I don't hear him, I'm not going to be accountable. Oh. Well, first of all, you look like an idiot. Second of all, you heard me. You cannot not hear my voice. And once you hear a preacher, once you hear a teacher, once you hear a Christian tells you, then you're without excuse. Hold thou me, God, hold thou me up, and I shall be saved. That's kind of weird. Because a Christian is, is in a battle. The Old Testament saints were in a battle. And you're out in the battlefield, and God hold me up. That's the worst place to be. We're called to stand as Christians. In trench warfare, World War One, and part, end of partial World War Two, You stood up in those trenches, you didn't live long. The Civil War. You got the, the, the blue and the gray, and they're coming at you. They're standing, and they're firing their, their weapons, and they fall. Why? Because they're not hiding behind trees. They're not hiding by rock. And yet God wants contrary to what life is. God says, stand up in battle on protection. That takes faith. That's like the man that Jesus, he had the withered hand. And Jesus said, stretch forth thy hand. Uh, you're God, right? Yeah, I'm God. Stretch, don't stretch forth. Stretch forth thy hand. Whoa! God has us in our lives do the impossibility. Mary, yes, you're going to have a baby. You're Gabriel. You stand in the presence of God. Yes. Okay, Gabriel. You're an angel. Let me explain something to you, Angel Gabriel. You need a man and you need a woman to have a baby. I know you angels don't have sex and you, you don't have marriages. And you need a man and a woman. Angel, like, no problem. Holy Spirit's going to come over, overshadow thee and and that holy thing inside your womb. Remember the virgin birth, Mary. I heard that's you. Oh. Zach Zacharias? Yeah. You and Elizabeth are going to have a baby. We're old. Yeah, right. Anything too hard for the Lord? 
Yeah, it's too hard for us. I think Peter was the one who said, Lord, who can be saved? Jesus said, with man it's impossible religion, but with God all possibilities. Hold me up. Put me out in front of you. Listen, that's what God did with the Job. See Job, Satan? <laughs> Whoa. And I will have respect unto thy statutes, the word, continually. What's the statutes? What do they tell the Old Testament? What's the Bible say? If God, I am in God's protection, God's going to take care of me. Well, what if I die? Absent from the body and present with the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. Unlike Christians. It's the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. You know what's wrong with Christians today? They don't have the word. 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 You know how I know? I go to a, a well-known bookstore that right here behind me, well-known. I walk in the Christian section of that bookstore and it says Christian fiction. I stare at them like, like a dog. Fiction means lie. Christian liars. And there's more Christian fiction shelves than King James Bible. Yeah, I go to, I, I want a, a King James Bible. Well, we'll have to order you one. But all this Christian fiction lie. Oh, we got plenty. Which one do you want? Which modern lying Bible that cuts and pastes God's Word? None of it. I will have respect unto thy say, Thou, God, has trodden down all them that err from thy statue. That couldn't be a second advent passage because the law happens during the tribulation. The law is coming back. The tabernacle is coming back. The priests are coming back. It's also for those that were in the Old Testament and they went and erred. They went outside what the law says and God, God beat the crap out of them. Don't say crap. I'm sorry for saying crap. I apologize for saying crap. But he did. You know what God did to David when he had an adulterous affair with a woman he shouldn't have and then he killed her husband? You know, what, you know what God did? You know what God trotted David down? Four of his sons died. And he's out on the run. He's out in battle. He can't trust his military leader, Joab, anymore. Joab murders two or three, I think. At least two. He's got one guy throwing sticks and stones and rocks at him. He's got Mephibosheth's servant coming up and lying to him. You know what Hebrew says about that for us today? God chastens us. Now, you may not be chasing your children out there and they're rioting and causing all kinds of ruckus, but God is chastening his children. So that is an active, Psalms 119.18, that's an active Old Testament, that's an active Christian, and that's a second Advent passage. For their deceit. It's falsehood. You don't know what deceit is? There it is. There's a Bible definition. It's falsehood. It's a lie. When that salesman deceives you into his product, he's done falsehood. When that con when, when, when that politician has deceived you to get your vote, that's falsehood. And that's an abomination of God. Thou, God, put us away all the wicked from the earth like dross. And that's, that's the second advent, and that's Revelation 20. Dross is the, the, the scum. When you, when you eat gold and silver, and my dad and I, we used to make our own fishing sinkers. We would get lead, and we put it in a thing. We melt it. We had to keep scumming off the top of it until... 
There was no more scum. I can say word scum. And what it is, you're taking off the impurities, you're taking off the dirt, you're taking off the, what's not gold, what's not silver, what's not lead, whatever you're melting, it, it's not, you're taking off it, what doesn't belong in it so you get something pure. And that's what God's going to do with the Christians. That's what God's going to do with the nation of Israel. God is just going to, I'll get, you wicked, get out of here, get, get out of here. Therefore, I love thy testimony. And what are the testimony? All that God has done in the Old Testament from Elijah, from Elijah, from Moses, from Aaron. I mean, Aaron, God showed great grace of Aaron. He made that golden calf that said, eat more chicken. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I'll take that back. He made the holy cow. I'm your shoot, man. He made that computer, I mean, oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. And God showed it, God showed Aaron enough mercy and grace. He said, I want you to be my high priest. Ooh, wait a minute. God, he's the one that made the cow. I love thy testimony. All that God did to Egypt in the book of Exodus to get his children out. How there was darkness in Egypt, but there was light in, in Israel. Can you imagine that moment? And when, when I read that, I, 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 I believe that the Israelites had light. And I believe the Egyptians had no light, no and they said the Egyptians did not even leave their house. How do you get light in Israel and none of that light reflects onto Egypt? I mean, even the middle of the night when you got the moon, it, it, it reflects the sun. Unless, you know, the moon is a position that there is no reflection. That's not only a miracle of God, that's a testimony. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. And the Bible says, the fear of the Lord bringeth knowledge, the fear of the Lord bringeth wisdom. I fear you, God. You are a mighty, powerful, terrible God. I mean terror, he spikes terror. When God takes out his rod and he chases because he loves us, I don't want to do that anymore. And he spikes terror supposedly in the Christian to realize, okay, I'm not going to hell, but there are other people going to hell. And if I don't tell them, I'm going to have to give an account. And I can't save them, but if I, if I do what God tells me to go out there and preach the gospel to them, at least they'll be without excuse. I'm afraid of thy judgments. America today in the world is not afraid of judgment. You say, what do you mean? Coronavirus? Earthquake? Famines? Floods? Nuclear reactors blowing up? Tornadoes? Hurricanes? Tsunamis? You name it, all these, oh, they're, 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 they're El Nemo, they're, they're, they're what, no, they're not weather phenomena, they're God. God is in control of the weather, not the weatherman. And the, all these acts, I say, like the insurance company that backs me up, they are acts of God. And they are judgments. And they're also being used for you to come back and repent of your sins. Egypt had a whole bunch of judgments of weather and all kinds of phenomena that's going on in the world today. 121. I am. I am. I have done judgment and justice. Where can you do judgment and justice? By the word. That's one of the things that people come up to me. Judge not, we should be judged. You need to give me your driver's license. Because you're not capable of operating a motor vehicle if you believe judge not least you judge. 
You're one of those idiots. We had one, I think it was yesterday, you were out. It was definitely a red light, and that guy comes flying right on through. That's somebody who's sick. Lead me not to my oppressors. Lord, I got people oppressed. Well, I'm a child of God. Things are supposed to be great. I get this smiling preacher. He says, God loves you. No problems for you. Why do I have oppressors? All they that the God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Jesus said, know that the world hated me. First. John says, marvel not my brethren. You know the world hates you. You know a great sign is you're doing great in your Christian walk? People hate you. You know what a sign is you're not doing so well in your Christian walk? The world loves you. That's Bible. Go check it out. Oh, we're supposed to have wonderful, great things. And let's see. Jesus ended up with the cross. Peter ended up hanging upside down. Philip had his body pulled together, pulled apart by two horses. Paul was beheaded. John was put into a, a hot vat of oil and left to die in flatness. Uh, Andrew died violently. Matthew died violently. Uh, we got a whole book called the Book of Fox's Book of Martyrs, and we got an entire volume of Martyrs Mirror. Where do you tell me that we're going to have a hunky dory great life of Christianity? I know where you're going to get that. Turn off the knob that says OFF and open your Bible. Because even the Old Testament saints got persecuted. And Jesus said, hey, you killed the prophets. Be surety. That means like a bail. That means it, it's money put down. It's a possession put down. I am being assured of whatever is being bought, whatever. I want that car. You really want that car? I want you to save that car for me. What are you going to give me? I'll put a hundred dollars down. Okay, that's enough. We'll put the car in the back. Listen, Judah meets with his sister, uh, his daughter-in-law. Didn't know his daughter-in-law. He's like, "Hey, can I come on to you?" She's like, "What are you going to get me for a surety? I'll bring you a kid of the goats." You ain't got no kid of the goats. What are you going to give me? I'll give you my bracelet. I, I give you my uh, my uh, uh, my ring. And I'll give you my staff. That's a surety. And he sent the guy off with the goat. And you don't know that story because you don't read the Bible. Yeah, I get uh, stop making fun of me. No, I'm not. Be a surety for thy servant for good. You know what that is right there? That is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's God's blood, Acts 20, 28. God purchased us. The devil said, how serious are you about that soul? Oh, yeah? Watch this. Beat the crap out of me. Stop saying crap. I'm going to suffer and die on that cross according to the scripture statement. And I'm going to go into your hell. And I'm going to deposit their sins in your hell. And you ain't going to keep me. And they buried him. Three days and three nights he arose out of that grave. According to the scripture. What is the perch? What is the bail? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's blood, Acts 20, 28. And he went up to Lucifer, Satan, he says, Hey, that soul has believed on me. That, that soul has trusted nothing but me. My blood paid is no longer yours. Write that name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And have the devil watch. You watch him put that name in that book. Well, what's it cost? It costs my blood. Let not the proud oppress me. Wait a minute. Lead me not to my oppressors. And he says, let not the proud oppress me. They're not oppressing yet, but he's like, you know, there's a bunch of pride people around here. Lord, I don't need, I got enough oppressors right now. Okay, Lord, can you keep those prideful people away from me? Can you... Keep those arrogant Christians away from me in their crap. Stop saying crap. Sorry. 
It's crap. And they're prideful. And you haven't read Revelation chapter 3. How good we are. How riches we have. Oh, we're just doing so great. We're doing so wonderful. And God says, you stink. You're naked and you're miserable. How that? My eyes fail for thy salvation. I am longing. I am wanting. I am desiring. I am coveting. I am lusting. For you to save me, Lord. That salvation, when an Old Testament saint died, he went into Abraham's bosom. What's the next thing he's going to see? What's the scripture on that one? The scripture. Jesus told that dying thief, today thou shalt be with him in paradise. Who, 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 who? Where did that dying thief go? Did that dying thief die? Where did he go? He went to Abraham's bosom. So you tell me Jesus crossed that coast, went to Abraham's bosom. Ah, uh, I'm just looking for the dying thief. Everybody, you stay here. Dying thief. No, the Bible says that at the... At the death of Jesus, the graves opened at the resurrection of Jesus, they came out of the grave. Who's the salvation? Jesus Christ. And for the word of thy righteousness, and we've done it over and over and over, the righteousness of God is Jesus. The word of God is Jesus. The salvation of God is Jesus. Sanctify and see thy truth. Thy word is true. That's Jesus. Oh, the Old, the old Testament so boring. Yeah, so is your boring story. Deal. Oh, Christians love that. Deal cards. It's not what that kind of deal is. Deal with thy servant according unto thy mercy. That's a long haul. Because you know what God's mercy is? I love you. I'll protect you. I'll help you. I'll save you. I'll give you things. I, I, your wants, your needs, your desires. I'll listen to you. I'll guide you. I mean, just take everything of, of every man in the Old Testament that's a child of God. And I, I'll Mercy. That's a per can I ask God for mercy? He's doing it. And teach me thy statutes. There's the word again. Well, don't you have a rabbi? Don't you have a, a Levitical priest? Yes, I do. But you know who's going to teach that priest? You know who's going to teach that pastor? If they are right and in the Lord and, and God is using them, it's going to be the Holy Spirit using them as a vessel. Too many prideful and proud men of the cloth and men of the, you know, behind the pulpit. I am the greatest. You are nothing. Shut up. If there's anything to be learned from you, it's the Holy Spirit. I am thy servant. That's a bold statement. A servant does what the master tells him to do. I just love the Lord. I'm a servant for Jesus. Do you tell people about uh, about the salvation and the gospel of Jesus? No. I let my light shine. You ain't a servant. Do you pray without ceasing? No. You're not a servant. Do you rejoice evermore? No. You're not a servant. Do you weep with those that weep and, and, and laugh with those that laugh? No. You're not a servant. Do you honor your mother and father? No. You're not a servant. Do you watch your eyes? Do you watch your hands? Do you watch where you're going? No. Do you study your Bible? No. Do you cheerfully give to the church? No. Then you're not a servant. That's why people don't like me. Give me understanding. That's your relationship to God. What I can do with my knowledge, what I can do with my wisdom, and what I can do for you, God, with what I know. Many people know how to write a book. And they fill that section of Christian fiction. 
They had no understanding of God of their right and lie. That I may know thy testimony. I want to know all about your workings, God. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. Look at that. God, you got to go to work. For they have made void thy law. Oh, you know what he's saying? Lord, yes. They're not paying attention to you. Yeah. <laughs> go get them. Get to work, Lord. Chastise them. Boy, that church, I mean, they're just worldly and, yeah. Turn them over to the devil so they learn not to blaspheme, Paul said. Whoa. You know how many times Paul in the scripture said, hey, listen, I turned this guy over to the devil because he wasn't doing right. You get that guy out of your church because he's not doing right. I rebuked him hard because he did wrong. Yes. Yes. When I see Christians faltering and going for the world, I do pray those prayers. Therefore, I love thy commandments, because I don't want you to beat my butt. I don't want to be chastised. He just asked God, Lord, they're, they're, they're making void, and at no value your law, chastise them. Me? I love it. I love the word. Above gold. Yea, above fine gold. I'll give you this whole trailer, trailer of gold if you won't read your Bible for three days. And some people say, yep. I'll give you tickets and trips to go to Mickey Ratland with you and the whole family that you can spend three hours in line to go on one stupid ride. And all you have to do is not go to church that Sunday and not read your Bible that week, and you'll see lines and lines of cars. Hey, I live in Mickey Rat Land, Florida. They opened Mickey Rat Land, one of them places somewhere, and there was just lines and lines and lines of cars. Now they're wondering why Florida is as a state that has all this coronavirus now. Duh! I don't know! I get my... <laughs> and how many were Christian? And when their church is closed, how many of those fathers in those cars will take those kids to, to, to adventure land? How many of those fathers taught their family while church was closed from the Bible? Yeah, that's why people hate me. I don't mind. Because I'm going to get <coughs> gold, silver, and precious stones. While you get wood, hay, and stubble. I'll get wood, hay, and stubble too, so don't. I'll set off some smoke detectors in heaven. Therefore, I esteem. And when Christians hear me preach, they get a steam. Ah! Hate that guy. I hate him. Don't blame, don't blame me. I got all kinds of people. I got Christians and non-Christians that hate me and just stand in line, take a number. Because <laughs> I preach the truth. I had one pastor one time kicked me out of his church and he told me, he said, you know what? He said, you got a great zeal. So you're going to kick me out because because you said I said that I didn't say what I said. I wonder how he's doing today. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts, the word, concerning all things to be right. Everything that God says is right. There's your standard. There it is. What makes the Bible right? Therefore I esteem all thy precepts... Concerning the thing, all things to be right. 
So how can you say, well, you know, letting the world in the church is bad? Uh, let's see. The world hated me first. Jesus speaking. And marvel not if the world hates you, John speaking, to the Christian. So you're bringing into the church something that hates Jesus and hates Christians. And you're going to use it for Jesus. Okay. Okay. You're bonkers. You're crazy. And, oh no, I hate, I gotta take a red pill. Oh, oh, he said hate again. Verse 113 says, I hate vain thoughts. He says it in 128, I hate every false way. Look at verse 118. For their deceit is false. I hate deceiving. You know what the psalmist said? If you got the devil in your pulpit, 2 Corinthians 11, that is deceiving the people, there are false prophets, that Jesus and Paul and throughout the scriptures had warned, and the law warned you about false prophets. That guy said, if you're listening to a woman preacher, I hate it. What's wrong with a woman preacher? The Bible says she's not to assert the authority. If they're bringing you the prosperity gospel, he says, I hate it. That's a false way to please the hell. If they're bringing you the gospel without repentance, without the knowledge of sin, he says, I hate that. That's a, that's a false way. And Jesus said, there'll be many coming in his name, false accusers, false teachers, false prophets. Ooh, this one was loaded. We'll stop there.